Nerd Soul. Why are you a black man in love? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Black Together, A Walk in Her Shoes. I am Lady Lisa, and I am here with my sister, cousin, partner in crime, Madam Butterfly. Say hello. Peace, love, and light, everybody. All right. We are in our second part of um, our new series, Love Taps. And in this part, we are going to be discussing uh, domestic violence and staying in toxic relationships. But before we get started, we want to thank Nerd Soul for allowing us to be on his platform. You can check him out on YouTube on That Nerd Soul. You can also check out his merchandise on shopthatnerdsoul.com. He has a variety of videos and content um, to choose from that has pretty much anything to do with um, Black geek culture. Once again, that is uh, That Nerd Soul. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, last week, we talked about um, disciplining our our children, disciplining Black children. And this week, we're going to be talking about, you know, domestic violence um, in the Black home and in Black relationships. So we need to check out the appropriate wear, as always. So what mm-hmm. do we have, Madam Butterfly? In today's shoe box, we have a Stomp 10 wedge boot with vegan leather because we are talking about domestic violence and staying in toxic relationships. All right. I just have a question. Yes, ma'am. Why vegan leather? (laughs) I had a feeling I had a feeling that you were going to ask me that. And, And I thought that it was appropriate because, you know, a lot of times the abused feel like somehow that this relationship is the best option for them. Right. They think that it's better to be in this relationship or maybe, you know, they it was something that they did. So while they're being stomped, they're basically making a justification. So, see, it's vegan leather. We're not harming no cows. See, it's vegan leather. Okay, you went, you went deep down. You know, it's a method to my madness. (laughs) Baby, it's not that bad. It's vegan leather. Okay. All right. So we're just going to jump. We're just going to jump right into this. This is, you know, it's not the most comfortable of topics, but (laughs) when are any of our topics comfortable? So let's start with this, because I always like to start with the beginning and be very clear about what exactly we're talking about and give some definitions. You know, I don't ever want to assume that we're on the same page. So, you know, I want to have some clarity. How would you define domestic violence? (sighs) Well, it comes in so many uh, varieties. Um, and so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to kind of hone in on all of the ways because, you know, I know a lot of times when, you know, you you hear domestic violence, you think of things like Ike and Tina or something like that, you know, you think about the, um, the physical aspect. So that Mm -hmm. is one thing, you know, there is the physical violence, um, and, you know, but there there could also be verbal abuse, emotional mm-hmm. abuse, um, even sexual violence. Um, sometimes people don't think that if you are married to someone or if you're in a relationship with someone that um, you can't be sexually violated or or raped. Um, Mm -hmm. so all of those things, whether, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, sexually, uh, violated, attacked, harmed, that to me kind of runs the gamut for domestic violence. What do you think? I'm going to disagree with you on a few things. Um, Mm -hmm. for me, I don't know. I feel like we, I don't know. I just feel like we we should be careful, just in my opinion, in lumping all of it together under violence. Um, Because, yes, of course, you know, there is sexual violence. There is, you know, physical uh, violence. But I don't know if if it's if it's, you know, uh, verbal and emotional. I don't know if I would loop that into violence, per se. 
you know, I know I have seen, you know, cases where for their own benefit, some people will try to say that someone was being violent with them when it's, uh, you know, arguments, intense arguments. And mm -hmm. sometimes that can be a slippery slope because, you know, if you call the police and say he or she is being violent with me, mm -hmm. right? And y'all had an argument, mm -hmm. it turns into a different thing. It, it's all bad, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I guess I just differ in, in um, putting it all kind of under the same umbrella of domestic violence. I would put it under, um, you know, I would say emotional abuse, verbal abuse. I just don't know if I would go as far as saying it was violence. Cause I don't know, I guess I see violence as being um, physical or a threat of uh, a direct threat of, of being physical. I don't know. I guess, I don't know. It can get a little murky, I guess. I get that. I get that. I get that. So, and I guess, you know, other people will have their, their own opinions, you know, but it's all pretty much food for thought. Pretty yeah, much. for sure. Um, so how does, in your opinion, how does a person find themselves? And let me stop for a second. I'm saying person because I want to be very clear on this, hmm. that, you know, men can be violent with women. Mm -hmm. women can be violent with men mm -hmm. not just can be but are right okay there are instances much much more than reported i'm sure mm -hmm. of women yeah. abusing men yeah then there, you know so i'm going to stick with that i'm going to say the person i don't have time to argue with y'all about it yeah <laughs> we, we're not we're not going back and forth about it. usually i'm very open and like oh i want to hear your opinion i don't want to hear your opinion about this <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just don't. Okay. <laughs> I will whoopie Goldberg on this one. How about nobody hit nobody? That's right. And we don't have to worry about who's stronger and who's weaker. Okay. Right. That's right. Because it don't matter if he's stronger than you if you're cracking him across the back with a chair. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I'm not, I'm not laughing at violence, people. I'm oh, I know. At, You're yeah. laughing at the absurdity of it. I know. Yes. Because yes. people people make these arguments and I'm like, but you knew he was stronger than you before you punched him in his face. Right. Anyway. But, but he's, but, but Lisa, <laughs> he's supposed to acknowledge that she's a woman and he's not supposed to hit her back. Because she's a woman, she gets a pass to treat any old man like a rag doll. You didn't get that memo? Well, That's not on your head when I had an argument with you. How about that? You and the <laughs> not on your head can argue about whether or not he was supposed to hit you after you bust him in the face. How about that? Right. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, not okay. only that, because I think, you know, when you start berating and being provocative, and mm. then you're shocked that someone uh, reacts to that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, I, I'm going to be clear. Like, there's no excuse mm -hmm. for putting your hands on each other. I'm going to be clear with, clear about that. However, everybody has limits. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and there's only so much that you can say to a person trying to provoke them you know that you can only poke the bear but so many times before mm -hmm. you get mauled mm -hmm. and so you know I think that sometimes that is a tactic that women use because they don't because they don't want to get in a physical tussle mm -hmm. so they use their mouth as a weapon to berate the person and then Absolutely. they're looking shocked when the person responds physically Right, you know. because you can't choose your consequences. Exactly. You know, people love to say, I can do and say what I want to. You certainly can. Yeah. You cannot choose the consequences for doing such. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. He had um, to hit me like that. <laughs> well, Who said? No, <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Well, he took it upon himself. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, 
and and so I know we went on a tangent early, y'all, but y'all can see we are very opinionated about this. Um, <laughs> but Nerd Soul and I were talking about this because we were also discussing um, the video with, and I don't know these people. I hope I get the names right. Is it Saweetie so uh -huh. and Quavo? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And the whole video with them in the elevator looking like right. two fools. Right. You know, and, you know, people are arguing, saying, no, 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 no. You know, she swung at him. And she fell on the floor and stayed there. I watched the video a couple times. It's like he did not knock her down. She kind of fell on the floor and all of that fumbling and bumbling. This isn't, <laughs> an, in this isn't an instance of him hitting on her. So we right. need to stop that. We need to stop trying to find things. Now, yeah. now talking about, and this is taking it back, but what about the video with, um, what's her name? Solange, Solange. and Jay-Z. Yeah. Now, had roles been reversed? Oh yeah. In that one. Oh yeah, he would have been fried. It would have been a problem. Oh yeah. But it didn't seem to be much of a problem because no. it was her, and everyone wants to say it was because you know Jay Z was running around on her sister. But I'm like, if she ain't beating on her husband, why? <laughs> you him? Why you right. all <laughs> discombobulated? <laughs> but okay uh, yeah sort of digress but not really okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so how does how does a person find themselves in a relationship where violence is is quote a regular part of the relationship hmm. i think there's there's many different ways that that, that can happen i think Certainly, if you grow up in a home where you see that type of thing, there's a certain level of um, desensitization where mm -hmm. you think that that's kind of normal and there's no shock value in that. Yeah. Um, I think that, um, you know, it, perhaps if you, um, perhaps if you have low self-worth and mm -hmm. you can be easily manipulated into believing or into accepting fault and responsibility and blame mm -hmm. for things that aren't yours, mm -hmm. um, that it kind of makes you a, a target. Um, man, I mean, um, and then again, you know, it could just be the re regular everyday person who, um, you know, doesn't see the kind of um, seduction that happens, you know, any type mm -hmm. of abuser, it doesn't matter whether it's physical or sexual or whatever, any type of abuser has this, this grooming process, yeah. you know, and if you're not aware of what that is, then you could very easily be pulled into it. And then, you know, you're already locked in before the action, any type of violence actually occurs. Yeah. So what do you yeah, think? I I, I agree with that. I think, you know, abusers, whether it be consciously or, you know, subconsciously, um, look for wounded people, mm -hmm. you know, broken, broken people. Um, because, you know, you can't, you can't continue to abuse someone who knows their self-worth, who um, has um, self-confidence, and who is not afraid to be alone if necessary. Right. You can't, you know, you can't continue to abuse them because they're like, you know, I don't need to be here. I don't feel like I need to be here. I don't feel like I need you. Um, I recognize that this is not love, you know, all of those mm -hmm. kind of things. And so, um, yeah, unfortunately, I think it does take a person who is um, wounded in some way to be abused and for you know the abuser they're in my opinion they're wounded in some way also right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know it it, it just manifests it, it manifested in a different way yeah. in them um you know and as far as it you know becoming a regular because this is just something i thought of you know like how I just imagine, you know, what happens with some people is they just 
wake up one day and realize this is my life. Mm-hmm. You know, my my significant other and my spouse hits on me, you know, whenever. It mm-hmm. could be any given day and this is my life, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, I just imagine that, you know, you make excuses and, uh, you know, if I had done this or if I hadn't done that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, this is just what you're doing every day. And you go back to, I think people always want to, um, use what was so good or what is so good Mm -hmm. to justify what is so awful and what's so wrong and what's so bad. Oh, well, they're really a good person. They're really not like this all the time. They really do love me. And it's like, but if you have to verbalize that, then they're not. You shouldn't right. have to say, but they're really a good person. Right. I should be able to see. That they're really, th- yep. That they're really a good person. I should right. be able to see that they really love you. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't think people actually um, get that. And I don't know, for me. Cause I know some people are like, well, just leave, just leave. Um, and it's, it's a lot. I, I recognize this a lot more to that um, psychologically, mm-hmm. but we'll get, we'll get more into that. I'm getting um, a little bit um, ahead of myself with that, but we're, we are going to talk about the psychological part of it. Um, what do you think some of the reasons are, are the typical reasons given by an abuser for their abuse versus the actual reasons for their abuse? Um, well, it's always someone else. It's always someone else's fault. Mm-hmm. Someone provoked them in some way to respond this way. And if it mm-hmm. wasn't for them, you know, it's like, see, look what you made me do. You know, I'm I'm sitting here minding my own business and here you come with your shenanigans and now I have to hit you, you know. Um, But really, I think that at the root of it, for the abuser, there's control, there's fear, um, there's probably low self-esteem, self-worth, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And those things kind of fuel the need to control the environment, to -hmm. control the person that they're with so that they can have their life be nice and contained the way that they want it to be and it not change. Yeah. 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 I I agree. And then there's, you know, also, I feel like they've never, they've either never learned how to manage their emotions or they were never taught that they had to. Right. Right. Because, you right. know, I, I think huh, that's the case sometimes, especially when we see some of these, uh, you know, younger kids, they get caught up in the system and their parents make excuses for everything yeah. that they do. Mm-hmm. And there are no consequences. Well, they grow up to be adult bullies. Right. You know, or, you know, somebody that will, they grow up to be somebody whose mama drove them across state lines, you know, to go shoot people. Right. That's you real. Know, that kind of thing. It's because real. that's, of course, a, a type of abuse also. It is. You know, it's it encompasses control, like you said, um, you know, lack of emotional management. Mm-hmm. Lack of accountability, mm-hmm. lack of consequences, mm-hmm. all of those things fall under what you could describe uh, as an abuser. Yeah, that's real. And um, and even narcissism, potentially. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that that thing that you said about, you know, the the parents That is such a huge thing where parents go in and they justify every the the bad behavior of their children and not look Mm -hmm. at what, you know, not look at their children's behavior objectively. And then these children grow up not 
knowing, not even knowing how to say, sorry, I apologize for, yeah. you know, for whatever they can't, they don't know how to apologize. They don't know how to, ex- um, to accept any type of constructive criticism um, or, you know, to respect any type of authority, take accountability for actions. Like all of that is, you know, it, <sighs> Yeah, and I, and I get it because I'm sure that the parents are just being protective because they're the parent, but it's so much bigger than that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you're you're manufacturing sociopaths by not, yeah. you know, holding their feet to the fire in situations where it needs to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that whole thing of, of you know, not being able to apologize, that is something that just plucks my everlasting nerve. I don't know why. It just, it just does. Um, because you have some adults that just, they just have, they struggle with that thing. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it'd be, it could be as simple as saying, you know, I'm sorry, you know, that my fault. I didn't mean, whatever it may be. And some adults just, they struggle with that thing. And I'm just like, this is craziness. This Mm -hmm. is absolute craziness. And I always, you know, when I watch stuff, And I love watching court shows and I see it on court shows. And it's like, it's all of this people being violent to each other, doing all these things. No one can take accountability. No one can tell the truth. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, but we expect our kids to tell the truth. We tell our kids, you should always do the right thing. You should always take accountability. But why? Right. (laughs) Right. So they can grow up and and not do it. Right. (laughs) You know, I mean, uh, We've taught my three-year-old to apologize. He knows when it's appropriate to apologize for the, for the most part, as long as it's not something like you know complicated. But he knows for the most part, you know, when to apologize. His his dad tripped over one of his toys earlier. He said, "Daddy, I'm sorry." Oh, you sweet know, baby. <laughs> so he knows that was my fault. That's my toy. Mm-hmm. Daddy hurt himself. Mm-hmm. I should apologize. Right. And he's yeah. three. Y'all right. is 53. <laughs> it, can't, it can't seem to get this together. That's true. But, sad um, but true. It's, it, it's sad but true. But it, it all, and that may sound small, but it all adds up and, mm-hmm. you know, can can manifest in, into these things. Um, yeah. So what are the reasons given by someone who's abused about why they're being abused versus the actual reasons. I know we've touched on probably some of this a little yeah. bit already. Yeah. Oh, you know, he's having a bad day. Uh, you know, I, I knew I shouldn't have said X, Y, Z because that gets them upset. Mm-hmm. I know that I shouldn't have done X, Y, Z. You know, it, it's, it, it seems that they find a way to make themselves responsible for whatever has happened. And, you know, I'm sure part of that probably trickles down from, from childhood and the woundedness that comes from that. Mm -hmm. Um, But also I think that if you're in a relationship where you're continuously being told that everything is your fault and you're not, um, you're not, um, being you're not rejecting that within Mm -hmm. the relationship then you start taking on those things you know whatever the thing is that that the person is is saying or they're in the ways that they're berating you Mm -hmm. you start taking on those things as if it's the truth yeah yeah um I agree and then you know Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I guess it's hard for me to just a lot of times wrap my mind around, um, regardless of any of that. I do understand, again, the psychological part of it, but it's hard for me to imagine someone staying. I know people stay all the time, but mm-hmm. the emotional and the psychological pull, I can't imagine the struggle. You know, with yeah. that to 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 cause someone to stay, um, in that, and you know, I've known of people that have lived this their whole lives, you know, forty some years, 
mm-hmm. you know, in, in a marriage like this. And I just can't imagine. Yeah. I just really, I just really can't imagine. Um, and I'm trying to think, do I want to get into this? Yeah, I'll get into this now. So, so let's also talk about, um, cause this will segue into the next part. Why do people stay? Hmm. Uh, fear of being alone, um, children, uh, finances, because a lot of times in controlling relationships, the abuser um, handles all of the money. So they mm-hmm. may not have resources or a, a family network. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of times the abuser isolates the mm-hmm. abused from the family. Um, mm-hmm. So they don't even have viable relationships to you know, to cling on to, to get out of those types of situations. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, people believe that they deserve that treatment. And so there's not a reason to leave, mm. you know? So yeah. what are your thoughts on that? I, I think the same thing. Um, I actually worked at, when I was in college, I worked at a YMCA, it was called the Women in Crisis Shelter. And I worked there kind of helping with, you know, the intake paperwork, um, just doing kind of administrative things. Um, And the center was in a house that was, you know, in a regular neighborhood. So you would never know that it was a women in crisis center because it was just, it looked like a regular home, you know, um, because it was a shelter for them. You, of course, didn't want it to stand out. Right. I just remember one lady who stuck out to me, she came there with her small child. He may have been about, he might've been about five. She came there and I remember her nails were done. She had a Louis Vuitton bag. I'll never forget it. She had a Louis Vuitton bag, nails were done, dressed really nice. You would have never known this woman was walking into a women in crisis shelter. And she was saying that she just picked up and left her husband, he had gone on to work. She came onto the shelter with her son. And um, she talked about, you know, she had no money. She had nothing but what she had with her. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, the way it was set up, there was actually a camera at the front door of the house. And in the office, there was, of course, the monitor. So you could see who was at the front step when there was deliveries or what have you. Mm -hmm. And the um, supervisor, she said she had been seeing this car outside of the shelter or outside of the house um, every day and just just sitting out there. And so she decided she was she was a bold, (laughs) older lady. She decided she was going to go to the car and ask them what, what was they doing and what if they want. Mm-hmm. Um, come to find out that it was a, a private investigator that this lady's husband had hired to find her. Mm. And so I guess he had been sitting out there. He probably, I think, was trying to figure out if this was a house or what it was. Because again, mm. you can't tell. And it's not that much coming and going not really um but I just thought that was that was that's just something that always stuck with me um you know because I always wondered how did she get there you know what Mm. I mean how did it get to that point you know because she looked like she had it all together but I always Mm -hmm. wondered what in the world had to be going on for her to just take her one bag her Louis Vuitton Mm -hmm. you know and her child in hand Mm-hmm. you know, and, and go on. And so I don't know. I mean, I, I just can only imagine, like, like you said, the financial, um, you know, aspect of it. And then mm-hmm. emotional, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I know I used to think, oh my God, I can't, you know, people are crazy for staying. That's just so dumb. What's wrong with y'all? But of course, as I got older and got a little wiser, it's like, I mean, if it was that easy, you wouldn't have so many people staying in it. Exactly. You know, nobody wants to stay and be abused, but there's just more involved in it. Like you said, there's, there's grooming. 
Yeah, so many layers. There, so many so layers many, to it. Yeah. There's so many layers. But one thing I did want to talk about that we hear a lot is people say they stay for the children. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that concept of people saying they, they're staying for the children? Um, I understand it and I don't understand it. Um, I think that, you know, for for people who either have experienced being a single parent before and don't want to go back to that or who have never been a single parent before and think that they can't do it on their own or people who um, feel that it is more important to have two parents in the home regardless of the mental and emotional state of said parents um, that it it's convincing though those reasons are s- significant enough for them to stay um, not yeah. thinking about the damage that's actually being done to the children in them being in that situation you know being desensitized to the violence um, thinking that it th- that this is how relationships are supposed to be you know mm-hmm. so they could potentially either be an abuser or be the abused based upon what they witness. Um, it's just, it's, it's very problematic. But I, I, I believe that the person who's staying, quote unquote, for the kids, that their intentions are pure. Mm-hmm. It's just not a complete, well-rounded thought yeah. when, they, when they choose to stay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think people's thought is, well, I don't want to break up their home. Darling, their home is already broken. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You all being in the same house does not make it a home. Right. You know, right. and I think some people want to live under that facade. You know, yeah. if we if we're all living together and in the same home and we're not divorced and we're not separated, then it's a home. Right. No. <laughs> no. People have stayed married for huh, a century. I'm sorry, a half a half a century. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And they won't live in a home. Right. You know, they were living together. Right. In the house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I don't know if I call it a home. A com- as know. combative roommates. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much, you know. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's not they didn't really think it through, or they're being very short sighted. Uh-huh. Um, and I think it's probably also people are taking, um, probably taking out of context what their experiences are. You know, yeah. well, my daddy wasn't around and my mom wasn't around. And yeah, I don't want to take that from my child. Yeah. You know? And it's like, but isn't it better if you do take that away, if it has to be this? Yeah. You know, well, but, you know, we, two choices, you know. Right. Well, we tend to overcorrect our dysfunction. Mm-hmm. That's what we tend to do. So, like you said, if you didn't have your father in your life, then you want your children to have their father in their life and you don't you don't take into consideration reasons why that might not be a good idea even though I'm not a proponent of you know keeping children away from Mm -hmm. parents and that type of thing when you're talking about violent type situations when you're talking about like substance abuse and things like that Mm -hmm. where the children are in danger that's a Mm -hmm. different conversation yeah 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 And part of that, I want to touch on in in, in just a little bit. It made me think about something. Um, But before we go any further, just just so we don't forget, we just want to put this information out there um, and give you the domestic violence hotline for anyone who may need it or anyone who wants to share this with someone they think may need it. Um, The domestic violence hotline is 800-799-SAFE. That's 800-799-7233. Yes. Um, oh, and I do want to put out there really quick for that number. Um, they have some, they've somehow encrypted that number um, so that if someone were to get access to your phone or your computer or something like that, they wouldn't be able to trace that in the search history. So, 
Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, um, so let's kind of dive deeper because we've of course uh, touched on it. Let's dive deeper in what are, what are the effects um, on the children uh, when they stay in these situations, you know, mentally, psychologically, um, you know, what, what are some of the effects on them as they grow and develop? I mean, they can become aggressive and violent um, towards others because they, they see that behavior being normalized and accepted. Um, they can become more passive and magnetize aggressive, violent people to their lives. Um, it, it can create a lot of problems between the child and the nonviolent parent. You know, they can become very resentful yeah. that that parent did not leave that situation and allowed them to be exposed, you know, to that type of behavior. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's such a destructive thing, you know, there's, there's nothing healthy about that environment for kids. It's mm -hmm. there, there's nothing good that can come from that. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, you know, I hadn't really thought about it that way, but I guess, you know, they can become resentful you know, to the nonviolent parent and see them as weak. Right. You no, know, you know, how could you allow that to be done to you? Why didn't you protect yourself? Why didn't you protect me? Mm -hmm. you know, why, why didn't you leave and all these different things and, and they can actually be set up to become either an abuser or the abused or both, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or just like emotionally detached. You know yeah. what I mean? Because if, if you if you see something, because when you said the word weak, I was like, that's perfect. Because if you if you see that the the person who's kind of accepting the abuse as weak, mm -hmm. then it might make you more of a no nonsense kind of person yeah. because you're overcorrecting and trying not to be weak. You know what I mean? And so you're not allowing yourself to be vulnerable. You're not allowing yourself to kind of have these intimate interactions and relationships yeah. with people. You know, it can it can really be damaging. Yeah, you could you develop a, a overgeneralization of the opposite sex. True. You know, um, or really either sex, quite honestly, you can right. just develop an over, you know, uh, generalization of men are this way or right. you know, women are this way, especially I think in situations where you see this not just in your home and your immediate family, but you know, maybe aunts and uncles, right? You know, grandparents. And I know unfortunately some people grow up that way, you mm -hmm. know, and they say this is just the way it is. And um again, I love court shows, but it was um one show that Nurse and I were watching and this young lady was going, she was in court with her ex-boyfriend and they're going back and forth talking about all this crazy stuff that they're doing to each other, you know, slashing tires and busting windows and absolute foolishness. <laughs> and she says, the judge asked her, well, did you do X, Y, and Z? She's like, I mean, yeah, but that's just, she said something to the extent of, because that's just how, uh, how your man does, and me and Nurse Soul looked at each other like, huh? And it was, a, <laughs> you know, how they show the audience in court, and there was uh -huh. a lady that you could see behind her. She kind of tilted her head and went, <laughs> "Like, no, that's your man, right? <laughs> like, you know, my man ain't doing all of this, you know, crazy stuff, running around and doing this, and I'm not doing this to him." And right. so it's like. That's crazy to me because she said it not to get a rise, but she said it very matter of fact. Like, right. don't you bust out your man's windows every once in a while? You know, no. <laughs> this, this is not normal. Mm -hmm. This is not what we do. You know, this, we don't bleach each other's clothes and, and <laughs> set your clothes on fire. <laughs> This is not normal life, ma'am, sir. 
Right. <laughs> you know, it, it's some people, it, it's craziness because, you know, even though those things I just said are not kind of going back to what we talked about before and it gets muddled, those things in and of themselves aren't violence toward the person directly, but it's still violence. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of smashing the windows and slashing the tires and, you know, bleaching the clothes is very aggressive and it can lead to violence, you know. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) It's it's funny to me how the only people whose clothes get bleached is the ones who spent three thousand, four thousand dollars on their clothes. (laughs) Well, you know what? When you were saying that, what I thought about was the scene and waiting to exhale with yeah. Angela Bassett and yeah. so many women cheered and went crazy over that I scene I and they f- and felt like the like her behavior was justified simply because he was committing adultery you know what i mean and i mean yeah he did her dirty and all of that kind of stuff but yeah. burning the man's car and clothes like what is that supposed to do exactly? Uh, yeah, you know, it's well, like it made her feel better. Right, <laughs> it, it made her it made her feel better. And you're right. You know, I mean, it's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. And I'm just gonna leave it there. It's wrong. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. I thought you were gonna say, however, <laughs> no, <laughs> because I have restraint. <laughs> I had restraint and I could recognize that it was wrong. There's no however. <laughs> it was wrong. Bernadette. <laughs> Bernadine. Whatever. Berna, Bernie. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's funny. So, yeah. Right. It was something. It was another point I want to jump on. I forgot it. It may, it may come back to me later. Um, what? Well, can I throw something in there? Sure. Sure. Um, but- the religious community, you know, <laughs> and and domestic violence and yeah. how the Bible can be used not only to justify certain um, domineering, controlling behaviors mm-hmm. within the dynamic of a marriage, but also um, to guilt the abused into staying. Yeah, You know, and especially in the days of old, if you came home and you said, my husband is doing X, Y, Z, they would send you back. Like, ain't no come, ain't no takes these backsies. This is who you are with. You go back over there and you be a better wife so that he doesn't hit you, Hmm. you know, and that was an acceptable practice, you know, and it was under the guise of you know, religious dogma, religious ideology. Yeah. And, and, and I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not a scholar of the Bible, but I don't know what part of the Bible that it endorses such behavior. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I really don't, you know, people can, people can twist and turn whatever they want to, to justify it. You know, white supremacists use mm. the Bible you know what I mean? So it, it can be utilized for anything. Well, evidently, it can't be utilized to help our people, you know, fight for ourselves or set us free. But moving on, um, we're going to go <laughs> to our break. That's a whole other topic, but I'm just, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was on my mind. Um, we're going to go to our break and um, we're going to go to In Your Black Business. Um Again, as always, we are looking for businesses that are black owned and black run. Um, we just like to, you know, pretty much help boost your business. Um, so if you do have a black owned, black run business of your own, or you know someone who does and you like to help boost that business, you can email us at myperspective at gmail.com. That's spelled M Y P H E R S P E C T I B E at gmail.com. Again, M-Y-P-H-E-R-S-P-E-C-T-I-V-E at gmail.com. Um, you can give us your name, the name of your business, 
um, a brief summary uh, about your business and your contact information. And that of course is you know free of charge. We're just trying to be supportive um, of black business. But I would like to give you guys some information that I actually discovered on today. Um, during Black History Month, Amazon did a really fantastic job of boosting black businesses and making it very easy to access the um, Amazon stores that were um, black owned or black run. And just out of curiosity, because I'm always on Amazon, um, I wanted to do a search again to see if you still could find the information. And I typed in by black. So in the search bar on Amazon's website, if you type in by black, it will give you, if I remember right, it will give you um, a link to that you can click on that'll give you a variety of items that are in black Amazon stores. And then it'll give you a bar of different categories to choose from. Awesome. Um, so if you are an Amazon fanatic <laughs> like I am, but you still want to support black business, that is the way to do it. Yes. Okay. And I just remembered that I I discovered a black business. Um, I'm getting ready to place an order, so I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say the name of the business. And once I receive the product, then I can let you all know how it is. But it's a um, husband and wife uh, team, and they have a coffee business called Writer's Pause. Um, and mm -hmm. so you can either order the beans whole for you to to um, grind them yourselves, or you can get the coffee grounds and they have all different types of flavors and, and, and different things like that. So um, I'm going to be placing an order and I will let you know how it goes, but it's writer's pause. Oh, awesome. Pause That's as good. in stop, not pause as in dog feet. <laughs> Yeah, wanted to make that distinction. <laughs> now everybody's gonna be thinking about coffee grounds and the dog. I just had to get it right. I just had to get it right. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for that distinction. <laughs> I'm a match in the front of the bag with, you know, the coffee grounds laid out with a dog paw in the middle. <laughs> I just can't start my day of chasing cars without my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, my Lord. Ooh. Okay. All right. So let's go on to New Day's resolution. This is our segment where we just talk about um, working on goals on a daily basis, um, you know, versus kind of stretching it out and, and going too far ahead in a way that may be stressful. So each day we try to meet goals. And at the end of the day, what we accomplished, we accomplished what we didn't, we didn't. And we just start anew the next day. So it's New Day's resolution. What have you had going on and how are your New Day's resolutions going, Madam Butterfly? Okay, I feel like I always have something new to talk about. Y'all, I'm a Gemini, forgive me, because I am all over the road at all times, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm still on the on the weight loss journey, having mm -hmm. my ups and downs with that. And I um, signed up for a 90-day uh, program, which I think I talked about in last week's episode. Um, it started on the 1st, mm -hmm. um, and that's the hip-hop uh, stepping and they have meal mm -hmm. preps and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm doing that. But the new thing that I have embarked on is uh, trying to be a better wife. Okay. Ooh, and, be and before, like, I, it's not that I'm a bad wife. Let me just put it out there. I'm not a bad wife. I just, you know, I really love my husband and I think he's an incredible person. And I feel like he deserves the best of the best of the best of me. And, you know, I haven't always given the best of me to anyone, whether it was a romantic relationship or not, in the past, you know, dealing with my own issues. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. There are so many YouTube videos about like 
you know, happy wife, dutiful wife, uh, submissive wife. Like there's so many different videos on that. But I ordered Shaharazad Ali's book, The Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man. And I am so eager to start reading it. So that's kind of where I am in my New Day's resolution. Wait a minute. How about- so is, is, it, is it the Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man or Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman? Well, she has two different books. So this one is the Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man. Okay. That, it's two different books. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. So tell me about you, girl. Okay. So I got something kind of new that's been going on. It's a whole lot. It's always like pieces of stuff going on here. <laughs> but um, so I, t- I think last time I talked about how I got in the, the we call them the booty bands, what they call them, the resistance bands. Resist- I know sometimes they're called booty bands, but like resistance bands. So I got uh-huh. those. I got my yoga mat. Um, and so I still haven't gotten a program together for that. But there's another plan. So we have we live in an apartment and we have a balcony. Well, it's not of much use right now because it needs to be power washed. It's awful. Our landlord refuses to have it done. Okay, whatever. So we have to do it ourselves. We had called a company for them to come out and do it. Well, we live on a main street in West LA. He couldn't find anywhere to park his van to come and power wash. Mm. So we couldn't get it done. So we're like, okay. So now we're gonna have to rent the whole power wash thing, do it ourselves. So it became a whole big thing. So the goal is to power wash the balcony and make it a really nice, comfortable area so that I can, well, not just for me, but in general, but my plan is to be able to go out there and do my yoga, mm-hmm. right? And um, so we were working on just the different things to get furniture out there, to get it power washed, to just do all this other different kind of stuff. So that's in the works. We're hoping to have that done um, by the end of this week. So I'm excited awesome. about that. I've been looking on. Amazon <laughs> to um, get me some workout clothes, um, you know, so I have stuff to put on. I don't want to make the excuse of, you know, I got into some jeans to go work out in. Um, <laughs> so I've been trying to get that together. Um, so yeah, that that's the new plan. And then I've been looking online at some different daily plans I want to do in terms of yoga and, you know, working out, just trying to really think about and narrow down those goals um for that so that's in the works that's in the works awesome. I'm, I'm working on that literally every day trying to get that together that's exciting um, yeah I'm excited about that girl I'm so excited about that balcony you just don't understand because it's just gonna it's gonna change everything because it'll be somewhere for you know my three-year-old to to go in and out because he wants to go outside every day mm-hmm. and it's just it's different because of course I'm not completely comfortable taking him to the playground because the playgrounds have become crowded. People out there, some have on masks, some don't. And then with kids, you can't really stop kids from interacting from, the way yeah. they really want to interact. And I feel bad yeah. for him. I take him on walks, but we're in West LA. And even here, you know, it's become, I don't want to say overrun, but the homeless issue has gotten pretty bad in our immediate area. I don't feel mm. completely comfortable and safe because, you know, it's some of them that, um, you know, they just seem to have some issues and it's just mm-hmm. kind of a safety issue, um, mm-hmm. a cleanliness issue mm-hmm. kind of thing, unfortunately. And so it just makes it difficult for him to go out. But having the balcony, um, you know, we can just open the door and he can go in and out all day. I can wake him up in the morning, put his clothes on and he could just do as he pleases out there. And I'm, I'm so excited about that. Oh, good. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a complete um game changer in terms of <laughs> kind of changing the dynamic in here and him being frustrated about yeah. being in here and you know wanting to go outside because this new thing is go for a walk go for a walk, go uh, for a walk. all day go for a walk. we just went for a walk like <laughs> walks is <we> taken? So, <laughs> you know that'll that'll help a lot so i'm really um i'm really excited about that and that'll just be a good uh, workout space too so. good yeah. good that's awesome yeah 
Um, so let's move to footnotes. This is a part of our show where we just talk about different things going on in the news outside of um, what our main topic is today. So what do we have in footnotes today, Madam Butterfly? Well, unfortunately, this is a, uh, just a, um, it's a sad story. Uh, Earl Simmons, commonly known to all as DMX, had a overdose in his home on Friday in White Plains, New York. Um, and as a result, he had a heart attack. Um, he is in the hospital currently um, in a vegetative state. There have been mm -hmm. different reports on, um, you know, how how minimal or active uh, the the brain you know, the brain activity was. Mm -hmm. um, but as of late Sunday, the last report was that he was in a vegetative state. Um, and it's just, it's a really, it's a really sad story for those that don't know. Um, you know, of course, we, we know about all of the, the issues that he's had over the years with drugs. But one of the most profound things was when he talked about how he how drugs became an issue for him and when he was 14 years old someone that he trusted um, an older person that he trusted um, they went to smoke you know a joint a blunt whatever and it was laced I want to say with crack and he didn't tell him mm. when he was 14 and so he smoked it and immediately knew that there was a problem and dealt with sus substance abuse issues, um, you know, ever since that time. And wow. um, it's just, it's so sad. And, you know, I, I can't even, I can't even speak the words of like, what kind of person, what kind of adult would think yeah. that it's a good idea to give a child crack, you know, it's just that it's so disturbing to me. And, mm -hmm. you know, now, you know, he's what, he's probably close to 50 if he's not 50 yet. He's, he's it, gotta be, I think. Yeah, he's somewhere around there. So, you know, you're talking about, you know, almost 40 years of struggling because- he's 50, exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're, you're talking about all of these years of struggling, 36 years of struggling with abuse and addiction, is, addic addiction issues because somebody else made a decision for him. You know, he didn't pick up a pipe and decide to smoke it just because and then had ad addiction issues. Somebody imposed that on him. You know, and that's yeah. not to take responsibility from all of his choices thereafter. But, um, you know, that's just it's just a horrible thing. And this is a, a, a horrible outcome. Yeah. yeah. So prayers so, to him and his family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So let's jump back in to the last part of our episode. So. You know, what are your, and this, this is going to be you know, kind of more of a personal thing, what are your general standards in terms of domestic violence? Like what have, what have been your, um, or what has been your stance in terms of, you know, if, if a guy ever laid hands on you or if a relationship ever became physical, what has been like, you know, in your mind, what's about to go down? Nuck if you buck. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was about to say, so be old versus new. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> I do not. I am not going to get in a physical altercation with a man. Right. I know that I am a woman. And I know that I have limitations as a woman. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to challenge a man to a duel in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But however, are there any I tools that you might. Oh, see, the, the, come, the however was coming. The however was coming. <laughs> 
I truly believe in the right to bear arms. Mm. And I have, I have taken time at ranges to make sure that my aim is impeccable. Mm. So you can step up, but you're going to limp back. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so if you want a life as Swiss cheese, then you do whatever it is that you feel like you need to do. Okay, because I'm bringing the smoke. Yes. Straight up. Yes. <laughs> now, my younger self, I probably, you know, the line was a little bit blurred with my yeah. younger self. But at this stage in the game, oh, no. And, and not even to mention, you know, I'm a mother of all boys. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's not, and they're very protective of mama. Yeah, that's not going to end well. It's not uh, going to end well. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to go ahead and handle that situation and lay them flat <laughs> before my boys even get into it, get into the equation. But luckily I am married. Right. I am going to be with this man for the rest of my life. And he is good to me. Mm-hmm. Ain't no laying of the hands except in all of the good ways. I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Except to bless you. <laughs> Only to bless you. What would he do? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> oh my gosh. Too much. <laughs> Too much. But yes, I, I concur with you. I've always said if anybody wants to lay hands on me if any man decide and i remember saying this to somebody before i don't know if it's somebody that you know i was dating and got in an argument with or whatever but i was like look i'm tell you like this you put hands on me you better make sure i either cannot move temporarily or permanently because that's gonna be the last time you lay <laughs> hands on me so all i'm gonna say that's <laughs> You know, I said the same thing. I'm not going to try to fight you. Right. I'm a woman and I'm not, I'm, I'm a small woman. I'm not stupid enough to fight you. Right. But I will crack you over your back with a chair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. We're not, we're not, we're not doing that here. I know that's not right. not doing that here. In the, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. <laughs> For anybody who wants to say that is not of the Lord, yes, it is. You know how you know how many wars that God called people to start in the Bible. There you go. Anyway, that's thus I'm saying. saith the Lord. Okay, package your gunnage <laughs> and press forth. The They're on unto- the words of Medea, peace be still. Right. <laughs> oh, so yes. Um, any any general um or anything else you really wanted to say about um, you know, our topic today and and, and domestic violence and just everything that we talked about. Um, I just wanna, you know, make an appeal out there to people who are in um, in these situations, um, there are resources out there. If you, if you don't have family or friends that can help you, there are resources out there. Please look them up. We provided a number for you as well. Um, please don't take for granted that the person will not lose control one day Mm -hmm. because it only takes one one punch, one slap, and that could be your life. So please do whatever is necessary to get out of that situation. Um, and I also want to make an appeal in particular to men, because I think that, um, you know, with, you know, being macho or the man and all of that kind of stuff, we that, that um, men tend to blow off um, the pop off. Yeah. of their partner. Um, but there are plenty of women in prison for, mm-hmm. you know, violent acts against their boyfriends and husbands. And it does happen, you know, and don't take that for granted either. 
So if you're in a situation where either you're being hit or you're being provoked to react, Mm -hmm. you need to get out of the, out of that situation for sure. You know what? And this is, I'm going to make this quick, but that just reminded me of something, a video that Nurisol and I saw. There was this young man. I didn't know who he was. I think um, Nurisol did. Uh, A young man who was doing a live feed, I believe on Twitch. And uh, his his ex-girlfriend, maybe current girlfriend having problems with whatever, started banging on his door in the middle of his live feed. And so he went to the door and you could hear some going back and forth. And she came in. And she was trying to tell him to get off, to end his live feed because she wanted to talk to him. And he was like, no, I told you we're done. I told you to go. They're going back and forth on the live feed at this point. And she's trying to be like real cute and, and cheeky and come on. And, you know, and he's like, you don't know how to act. She's like, you don't know how to act. And it's just real. It's disturbing. It's, it's really disturbing. And so what ends up happening is I think he ended the live feed. But I, I believe um, after he did that, he somehow ended up, I don't know, recording again. And you could hear her screaming, like yelling at him, screaming. She's throwing things all just going off. She wasn't being cute anymore, right? Mm. She's screaming and hollering. His neighbors had obviously had evidently called the police mm. because of the noise complaint. And they can hear her in the hallway. So this is on video at this point from his apartment. So when they come in, they come in and ask her, is there any reason why you're screaming this way? And he, they ask him, would you like us to escort her and, and have her leave? He's like, no. <laughs> and I'm sitting, I was sitting here with like my jaw on the floor. Like, are you kidding me? Where do you think this is going to go? Right. How do you think this is going to go? Right. That was your out. That was, you have all of this, you know, recorded. They see that she is clearly the one that's being a little much. Mm -hmm. And it was, it just really blew my mind because unfortunately I can only see what will happen next is that, you know, she may possibly become physically aggressive. And then if he puts hands on her, we know how that goes. We know. Poor, Poor little her. You know, this black man has put his hands on. I think she was, I think she was Latina. This, this black man has put his hands on, on this woman. Uh It's just not, they were, they seemed very young, you know, but I was just like, this, this is craziness Uh to me, you know, but um, yeah, I I just want to say to, to people in general and especially young people understand that this is not a healthy relationship. I don't want to say it's not normal because I understand it has become normalized mm-hmm. to some people. Mm-hmm. It's not a healthy relationship. This is not the way relationships are. Mm-hmm. It's not. You don't have to, you know, you're not Miss Sealy. You don't have to fight, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> all your life, you know, or Miss <laughs> but it's just it's not the way it's supposed to be you're not supposed to have this struggle and this conflict and especially not a physical um you know one so understand that this is not how it's supposed to be and this is not normal also understand you cannot fix somebody else say it again you cannot fix somebody else Mm -hmm. that's what jesus is for (laughs) i'm just look (laughs) It's for real. You can pray for them, you know, um, but that's pretty much it. You are responsible for you and fixing you. And you have to understand if you are staying in this situation, you have to understand and come to terms with there's something going on with you that you need to deal with. You are your responsibility. Your only responsibility you have for someone else is to handle them with love and pray for them. Your responsibility is not to be with them, mm-hmm. even to be friends with them or or anything like that, because you're responsible for you. You have to protect right. you. Mm-hmm. You can love somebody from a distance. Yeah. From a distance. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so that, that's what I'll say on, on that. It's, it's not normal. And, you know, there you go.
So um, I hope this has, has sparked some thought and hopefully some conversation. Um, you know, we look forward to looking, uh, to hearing you guys' uh, comments. Um, you know, we, we love when you guys, you know, comment, of course, we want you to like, comment and subscribe, but most of all, continue the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, outside of this, continue this conversation, um, you know, and, and maybe there's some things that would, would, will change your mind, some thoughts that you've had or some ideas that you've had or whatever that'll change your mind. But as always, thank you all for listening. Again, like, comment, subscribe and share. Um, you can check us out on That Nerd Soul. Check out Nerd Soul's many, many um, different videos and content on YouTube on thatnerdsoul.com. Um, and pick yourself up some summer gear on shopthatnerdsoul.com. So again, thank you guys and bye y'all. Peace, love, and light, everybody. Bye.